We have a lot to freaking talk about. We made it. You know, the harsh reality is we're never going to do anything important. Y'all have already seen me create a project from start to scratch. Definitely one of the things I want to talk about. So stay tuned for that. I spent months building this MVP. I have no professional experience with either of these tools that I plan to implement and all those things. So I think my likelihood is probably pretty darn good. My real pro tip for you all, if you're going through this fear, pick up the pen, pick up a piece of paper, start writing, start building, start with a single button. What is the one thing that you want to do and set the standard, set the metric. Let's get after it. Human required, check. Assembly time, 20 minutes. Drill not recommended. Yeah, that seems optional. All right, good morning. It is a couple days after the podcast. Just want to say, uh, I was super nervous. Uh, I think the podcast went really well, but yeah, I was super nervous. I had a lot of freaking fun. The podcast should be out in a couple of weeks, and I'll make sure I share the link with y'all down below. So, sounds like a big old truck is going by. Freaking, don't they know I'm recording a video? How rude. But anyways, we are down at this park here and we have a lot to freaking talk about. I just want to say one, get yourself a fun drink, pull up a seat, let's freaking go because we are going to dive in. Actually, we made it. We freaking made it and I'm so gosh darn excited to show you all the last demo before the MVP. I actually put the app on my real phone yesterday or late last night and it just worked. There is a couple of styling things, more like little nits that I should fix uh, and I will fix before I release it. But now we're at the point where we are officially code cut off and we're at the MVP. There are a couple things that we still need to do like get EAS set up and if you're unfamiliar, I'll show you that process. It is just how you can uh, deploy both Android and iOS all up in the cloud and you don't have to do any of the work locally on your machine. So I want to get that set up. Maybe I'll even take it as far as getting it hooked to GitHub Actions so that way it's uh, you know set up once and then it's just done. We'll see. We'll see how hard that is. But let's dive into the last demo of the MVP and show you just kind of where I left off. And this kind of gave me a little bit of FOMO. It wasn't sure if I should have. Uh, it, it's really easy as a developer to say like it's not polished enough, just got to keep going. And I am checking myself because I don't want to do all of the work, you know, and take it down the wrong direction. I don't think some of the things are necessary, even though probably six, 10 videos ago, I was saying, oh, I definitely need that part. I remember in a video a couple months ago saying, oh, finances were definitely like super freaking important. And they are really, really important, but they're not so gosh darn important that I have to have them in the MVP. So this is just me holding myself accountable, saying like, didn't need those things. And I'm saying it just so you, you in the camera can realize that you don't need all of the things that you think are necessary for the MVP. Take what you have right now, cut it in half. It's probably where your real MVP is. Every single item should have to fight for its life to stay on your MVP list. And I was just like y'all, <laughs> way overzealous. And uh, I think where we landed is in a really healthy spot. So let's go to the demo. All right, y'all, I'm so excited to show you this MVP. And uh, after this, I would love to talk about kind of like the fear of pushing an MVP and hopefully some helpful tips and tricks that I have to honestly just get through those fears, not necessarily over the fears, but through the fears. Uh, so let's dive in. As you can see here, the main screen is really different from what it used to be. This is, uh, you know, features coming soon. I used to have like little placeholders there, much rather just show the features coming soon than have the placeholders that uh, don't do anything, <laughs> aren't pretty to be uh, totally honest. And I think this is totally okay. One of the fears, just to kind of give you some insight, one of the fears is pushing an app before you think it's ready. And uh, we won't dive into that too deeply right now, but it will be something we're talking about, so stay tuned. And let's just dive in. Let's start from the top down. Uh, and as you can see here, if you're familiar with Clerk, you know that this is like the default image for Clerk. And I think this is super sleek, super clean. Uh, and let's go ahead and dive into it. So as you can see, this is a really basic profile. I'm sure it will expand, you know, once I get subscriptions and user settings and all those types of things. This content will definitely become more complex. But for now, super basic, super easy, super clean. And those were the main priorities. If we go ahead and click the little pencil icon, we get a bottom sheet to either change or remove the avatar. Obviously, we don't have one right now, so let's go ahead and change it. I'm filling the waterfalls today, so let's pick the waterfalls. And as you can see, now it is actually uploaded to Clerk and we have our real waterfalls. 
Uh, if you click the support, it doesn't work on the simulator, but if you're on a real device, it'll open your mail client and it will go ahead and set your customer up to send you an email. So just try to think of the things that you would want to know, what type of device, what the problem is, what did they try, can you reproduce it? All of those things to help allow your users to more easily submit bugs to you so that you can get them fixed. The other two big pieces here are the uh, push notifications, doesn't have it yet, and a face ID, I would love to have that going forward, and I think that will be super helpful. So for now, they're just uh, disabled, can't change them, they don't do anything, they're really just eye candy, and then your simple logout button. So after the profile, let's kind of talk about the new bottom sheet to either create projects or inventory. If you come down from any tab that you're on, you can click the plus button and you'll get this bottom sheet. If you click in the void above the bottom sheet, it goes away. But on the bottom sheet, we have a few action buttons. Y'all have already seen me create a project from start to scratch. And this is the easy way on how to create a brand new one. So we can come in here, click create project. And once again, we have uh, all of our stepper type wizard type flows to fill out and submit a project. This is a very similar experience. So we can come in here, we'll give it a title. So this will be a test title. We can upload a fix picture. This will be flowers. Click your next. The current quantity is one. The units is uh, YouTube and the category is definitely miscellaneous and low stock is considered zero. Threshold warnings will be so that you can get push notifications. And like I said, once again, the feature doesn't exist yet. So I just uh, want to tease them a little bit with a coming soon and putting on the disabled toggle. You submit this. Now we can see we can go to our project. Here's our test title. Uh, I think actually now that I'm doing this demo, one thing that'd be nice is perhaps, and maybe it's a user setting, it might be nice if I create a piece of inventory if it routes the user directly here. So I think that could be pretty cool. Just uh, maybe they want to see it or something. So we'll uh, that's and that's exactly why we need this type of user and beta feedback. So maybe that's a feature they don't want. Maybe that's like a must have. I don't know. You can see here that we have a metal shelf and it has a little warning icon in the top right. And that is because this particular piece of material or this inventory item is of low stock. If I actually turn on the low stock filter, all of the low stock items will come back. If I click into this inventory item, we can see we have a low stock warning here and we can actually go edit, get you right back into that uh, flow there. And we can say, oh, I actually have one now come and submit and uh, happy days. The warning goes away. We can see here the warning is gone. If I put on low stock, there is no low stock items. I need to make this view look a little more pretty. The text is just kind of ugly, but we can come up in here. We can search for something like shelf and all of our shelving type items will come back. We clear that out, come back into this. You can see there's a restock button here. The feature doesn't exist yet, but this is where uh, once you click this, it'll give you a beautiful bottom sheet to quickly allocate inventory to this particular item. And I think that'll be really helpful as a users like in Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. They're like, oh, I'm purchasing metal shelves. I have five of them. Click restock and just slide up the you know number pad thing, uh, the little slider that you see on iOS devices to quickly go to five. And I think that will be chef's kiss. The last thing here is the projects. You can see there's zero to do. We have one project in progress. Something I added to these was the little badge in the top right to kind of indicate, is it like in progress? Is it due soon? Is it due tomorrow? And I think, is it past due? They're different colors and just really eye candy to, to help stand particular projects out so it uh, can bring awareness and actually help you identify which ones are due soon without having to scroll through and look at each every each and every date. If we come back to the to do, you can see the empty list here gives you a simple project. You can come in here. Once again, you're back in the same flow. And uh, I think that is the MVP. We have our dashboard with projects. We have projects, we have inventory, we have basic profile settings. That is all I need. So that is the end of the demo. And let's move back over to my real camera because I want to talk about some of the fears of pushing this MVP. Even though I'm really excited for it, I'm still afraid of a couple of things and I'd love to talk about that with y'all. So let's talk about this fear and, and here's maybe a harsh reality for some of you. And I'm speaking to myself when I say this. If you only live by fear and if you only care what other people think, you know, the harsh reality is we're never gonna do anything important. And that's a real freaking shame. You see, I am terrified to push this app out and honestly get real feedback, you know? I don't wanna say it's fun to get absolutely roasted. Sometimes the comments are funny, I suppose, but it kind of sucks when you put months and months of really hard work. Like, look at the facts. I spent months 
building this MVP, probably a little slower than I should have just because I am balancing all these other things, but I spent months of really, really hard work. I learned React Native and low-key React. Like I have no professional experience with either of these tools. So this was <laughs> literally from the ground up, learning this tech, learning how to implement this tech, learning some of the best case scenarios and worst case scenarios, things that you need to protect from. And uh, yeah, it's a whole lot of freaking hard work. And my big fears are that I'm gonna push out this MVP and I'm gonna get absolutely roasted. Somebody telling me that it is dog shit or I'm going to push it out and nobody's gonna care. Like I'm not gonna get any kind of users. I have marketing strategies and that I plan to implement and all those things. So I think my likelihood is probably pretty darn good, but nothing's guaranteed. And that's, uh, that's a scary thought. That's a scary feeling. And I think courage and the work to push through this and what I want to give to you all is that courage is a muscle. It is something that you build and it is something that you have to intentionally build. And I think a lot of you all suffer from analysis paralysis. I too, I've been there for many years, not even months, many years of analysis paralysis and worrying about if there's no point to what I'm doing. And I think it's, uh, like I said, something that we all suffer with and it is something that we all together can work through with. So this is a huge reasons why I started things like the Discord community so we could build like-minded people. And I don't wanna spam you if you're interested in that top link down below for the only Discord that donates every single penny to kids in STEM. But I think this is something that we can all learn from and grow with together, support one another. And my real pro tip for you all, if you're going through this fear, just start building something. Acknowledge it for what it is. Say, it's cool to be afraid and still do it anyways. You know, Aristotle says that you become courageous by building things, by going out and just doing the damn thing. So my challenge to you all is, what are you afraid of right now? Because the reality is, if you acknowledge it for what it is, and this is the challenge, acknowledge your fear for what it is, and I promise you, it'll allow you freedom to just be okay. It's cool to be afraid and still do the hard thing. And by challenging yourself and doing the hard thing, that's how you start building. And that's how you build a skill. And that's how you start actually being really okay with being uncomfortable, right? Being comfortable with the uncomfortable is, is the quote that most people are tossing around. And I think if you can work through this iteratively, not trying to tackle the world, not trying to do the hardest thing you could possibly do, but just start small, take the very first step, what's right in front of you. And if you can do that, if you can conquer that fear, if you can acknowledge it and still be cool with it, I promise you that all of the good things that you're dreaming about, that you're desiring to do, you know, you want to start a YouTube channel, you want to be a developer, you want to build this, that, blah, blah, blah. All of those things are right in your grasp. I think you are closer to it than you believe you are. And I promise you, just start putting down words on paper and uh, show up every day. And if you continue to do that at the end of weeks and months, you can look back and be like, holy shit, I did this? That's so freaking cool. I'm so proud of myself and uh, I'm proud of you too. And if nobody has told you yet, I'm proud of you too. So pick up the pen, pick up a piece of paper, start writing, start building, start with a single button. What are you working on? Let me know down in the comments below. I am super eager to support you. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this very last demo. We're gonna start turning the new leaf here in the next videos we have to talk about onboarding, user feedback, what's the next steps in the roadmap. There is no roadmap, right? We need to make that roadmap. And uh, I'm very excited to share that journey with you all. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. And I hope you all are ready for this next week. If you want to do a pro tip for yourself, here's the last piece of advice I have for you. If you want a pro tip for yourself this Sunday, right after you're watching this video or right now, pause this video, come back and let me know what you have written down when you're done. Go ahead and write down the one thing that you want to do tomorrow morning, Monday, to start off your week. What is the one thing that you want to do and set the standard, set the metric. Let's get after it. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all had fun and I will see you all next week. Peace.